All right. Uh, let's see how this goes. Okay, uh, I'm not uh, really sure where to go. Wait, do I do I still have my shield? Okay, I uh, lost my shield at some point, I guess. Uh, I just noticed, I don't know if that was here. Uh, I'll have to check later, uh, go through the recording and see where I lost my shield because uh, I have no idea. I don't know if it's something to do with being turned into a rabbit.
Okay, I'm gonna try and get down to the uh, southeast there. It looks like it's something, anyways. Unless it's the big key. Uh, okay. I think it's kind of odd to get the uh, big key this early in the dungeon. So the uh, the next Zelda after uh, uh, the two DS ones uh, was uh, Skyward Sword, and that was I think the most uh, disappointing Zelda for me. Uh, I do think it is a bit better than the DS ones, anyways. Uh, But it's, I don't know, uh, yeah, it's kind of hard to explain. It's like, it's a really good game buried under a lot of garbage, which makes it, I don't know, even more frustrating. Because, uh, you know, it's like they went, they made a good game, and then they ruined it. Uh, which is, like, uh, you know, a lot worse than you know, it just turning out bad on its own. Uh, like, I feel like, you know, if I, like, had the source code to Skyward Sword, uh, I could fix it, no problem. It would be, you know, just take out all the cutscenes and Fi and uh, all the hand-holding and everything, and then you've got a great game. Uh, whereas, you know, I don't know you know, fixing the DS ones, I think, is much harder. Like, it's much more ingrained in how they were built and everything. Like, you know, of course, uh, switching it to a normal control scheme would, wouldn't be too hard, but... Uh, uh, you know, the, the structure of, like, how linear they are and, uh, you know, stuff like that is, you know, a bit harder to fix. But with Skyward Sword, like... Uh, you know, I don't think there's anything uh, inherent with the motion controls to the game. Like, I think you could easily change Skyward Sword to not have any motion controls. Uh, I know there's some people that are like, oh no, it's, you know, it's all built around them, but really it's not. Like, uh, Link attacks in eight directions, just like he does in uh, all the other 3D Zeldas. Uh, you know, they could do the exact same control scheme for that. Uh, the the flying and the swimming and everything could just be normal controls and you know they're horribly obnoxious as they are. Uh, you know the gyro controls for like the bow and stuff are okay, but uh, you know you could have the option to use normal controls as well. 
but yeah, it's just, I don't know, there's just so many things that I don't like about it, like, uh, you know, Fly is constantly interrupting you, uh, you don't go five minutes playing the game without Fly coming in to tell you something. Uh, which I found that was that made it even worse because it was like okay you know I'm getting into it I'm actually enjoying this one puzzle section or whatever and then Fi just pops out of nowhere and is like oh hey did, you know there's a 95% chance that if you hit this block it'll open the door there and you know uh, she just you know gets in the way all the time You know the the overworld of the sky, whatever was uh, horribly empty. They they could have added something to it. Uh, you know, even if it was just you know little places with enemies that you get off on and you know fight the enemies there or whatever. Uh, you know, there was no reason to not let you go out at night. I thought that was just a silly restriction that just, uh, you know, like the other, the other characters were going out at night, but, uh, for some reason you couldn't, and it just, you know, even if there was nothing special at night, uh, you know, or just some of the islands would have skeletons pop up or whatever, it just seemed like, uh, I don't know, there was no reason for it, uh, You know, the flying controls and swimming controls were just horrible. Uh, you know, waggling your wrist the entire time while you're trying to go somewhere was horrible. Uh, you know, getting the notification every single time you pick up an item uh, was just ridiculous. Like, I don't know how they thought that was a good idea. Like, how do you make the game and apparently playtest it and stuff and nobody says, oh, you know, Maybe this can just be shown the first time you get the item. You know, or like the Wii does have like a clock and everything. Uh, if you're worried that they've forgotten, like okay, if they haven't played for a week, then the fir then you know reset all those counters or whatever. Okay, good. Uh, this is a big block, uh, so I'm probably gonna get those mitts here. Like the uh, the hints for all the puzzles were just obnoxious, especially since they weren't that difficult. Like I remember there was somewhere like it even like specifically said like right in front of them like you know do this to solve it or whatever. Yeah, guess I'll have to go buy another shield. I uh, know this is the boss, I think. I lead her into the light, and then uh, she turns into the boss and attacks me. So after I played uh, Skyward Sword, I was basically like, okay, like, you know, I'm done with the series. Uh, if this this is what they're making now, uh, you know, this is what the Zelda series has become. I'm just I'm not interested. Uh, so from then I was like, okay, you know, I'm I'm not going to play any more Zelda games. Uh, uh, there's just no point if this is what they're going to be. Uh, So then when uh, A Link Between Worlds was, you know, uh, starting to kind of, you know, have news come out about it and stuff, uh, 
to begin with, I was kind of like, okay, you know, whatever, it's another Zelda game, and I didn't really care about it. Uh, but then, fortunately, it turned out, uh, you know, t towards the end when, you know, the last, you know, the, or towards when, like, the reviews were coming out, and they were all basically like, you know, they've learned their lesson, this isn't Skyward Sword, uh, you know, they've gone in the completely opposite direction, and you can... Uh, you know, you can do the dungeons in any order you want, and there's like, you know, no cutscenes or hand-holding or anything. Uh, that ended up, uh, you know, making me, you know, get it. Uh, so I got it like day one, and uh, I ended up really liking it. Uh... Okay. Uh gotta not die now. Okay, that doesn't work. I'm supposed to have uh, like the better armor by now or something because I seem to be taking a lot of damage. I don't remember getting hurt this bad uh, when I used to play it. Yeah, so anyways, I got the uh, Link Between Worlds and I liked it a lot. Uh, the only thing is I found it was a bit ugly. Uh, I think a lot of the 3DS games are unfortunately a bit ugly for some reason, the Nintendo ones. Like the new Super Mario Bros. games I think are all kind of ugly, and the uh, Samus Returns I think was pretty ugly. They all just have this feel where they're like, I don't know, they feel like they just took generic uh, 3D assets, put like a generic uh, texture over, and some generic like Unity introduction shader or whatever. And then just like called it a day. Like they don't really have uh, an art style. Although I did think it was cool what they did, where they uh, to make this uh, three-quarter view that they do. Uh, they have like everything in the world uh, leaning. Uh, uh, yeah, if you've never seen like how uh, Link Between Worlds is actually you know tilting its 3D models, you should look it up. It's pretty cool. Uh, basically, like, you know, all the characters are leaning back away from the screen so that they can make it look just like this, but with 3D. Uh, it was also a bit disappointing that it was the same world as Link to the Past, because it was, you know, it felt like just playing the same game, kind of. Uh, you know, I would have really liked to explore a new world rather than just the same one over again. Uh, especially since they went and they said, like, okay, there's, like, the the Underworld or whatever, the uh, Labrina or whatever, uh, but it turned out to be just a link to the past, it's a dark world, which was, uh, I don't know, it would have been much better if they had made something different. I can take these guys. Uh, I think I can get my sword upgraded now. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to. Uh... Him. Uh, 
Right, there's that chest. I think that's got the last bottle in it, maybe? Alright, I guess uh, now that I've got the glove, I should be able to, uh, uh, well, I can get around the world a bit easier, and I also don't have to worry about uh, uh, getting stuck in the light world, because I know there's, uh, there's several spots around where you can... Uh, pick up a, a black rock in order to get into the uh, dark world. Right, so what's going on here? Uh, well, this comes with me, right? Okay, where do I... Okay. Probably pick up another shield sometime, I guess. Head up to Mount Doom sometime and get the emblem, but I think I'll just get that when I'm heading by there to do the dungeon. Uh, need a shield. Uh, the upgraded armor. Uh, anyway, I think that's going to be it for uh, today. Alright, uh, back after a couple days. Uh, let's see, I just, uh, yeah, I just got the bottle, uh, the last bottle, and I did the other dungeon the other day. Uh, so I need to still get the silver arrows, uh, that last medallion, which I'll just get when I'm up there. I'm not gonna go out of my way. Uh, I think there's the cane, fire rod, uh, yeah, they would be dungeon items. Uh, there's one more, something goes down there, uh, I don't remember. 
Uh, I need a shield as well sometime. Uh, I don't know if I'll go in my way and buy one or I'll just wait until I, uh, I don't know, get the mirror shield. Uh, yeah, uh, anyways. Uh, so what's happening now? Um, Uh, I guess I'll go try and do the ice dungeon. Uh, it'll get me the... Uh, whatever, the... Uh, I think it's the armor is the only thing in it. Uh, so hopefully I can actually do the dungeon. Uh, like I said before, I, I can't... Uh, I mean, I, I've never done the dungeons really out of order. I, as a kid, I just did them in the number order every time, so, you know, who knows? Uh, I just want to check and see if there's anything. Uh... Yes, alright, that's what I was looking for. Yeah, I'm not sure if the uh, the magic is worth it, really. Uh, the green uh, potion, because uh, I never even use magic, really. But uh, I guess it'll be good to have, just in case. So I was looking up uh, where I lost my shield, and apparently these guys can take your shield. So I'm guessing that's what happened. Uh, I remember at one point I was just kind of idling uh, in front of the water dungeon and uh, uh, there was one of their, th those and I'm guessing it probably hit me. Okay. Uh, I guess I'm not doing this dungeon right now. Uh, I think I need the fire rod, really. Uh, uh, there's probably some way you can do it, technically. Uh... You know, maybe like Bombos or something would work, but uh, I have a feeling like halfway through I'd end up uh, running out of magic or something. Because I think it uses way too much. Uh, dungeon.
Ah, okay. I uh, just saw in my inventory there. I don't think I have the right uh, magic spell for this. I think I do need the one uh, from up at uh, Death Mountain. Yeah. Okay. Um... I guess I'll go get it first. I guess I can, I, I can warp up here so it's not going to take as long. I was worried I was going to have to go all the way through the caves and uh, you know, all the way from Kakariko. Plus I can uh, explore a little bit up here now that I've got the uh, hookshot and the hammer. I think those were kind of the limiting uh, things. I want to drop down into that hole just just to see what's in it, but uh, I think I should probably just uh, check down here first. at all. I don't remember being there being like a maze of uh, holes and stuff here. Okay, uh, I'm guessing that'll be a heart, and uh, I probably need to drop into it from uh, one of these. So I went down there, and that was nothing, but uh, I think this will be it. Okay, uh, 
be here. He was selling a shield, I'd buy it, but uh, yeah, the shops in this are kind of useless. Uh, I know they're not usually that useful in most Zelda games, but uh, I don't know if they're particularly useless in this one. This should land me next to that chest, I think. Yeah. Really? Oh, that was disappointing. see anything uh does that go anywhere okay yeah all these little like rooms that I don't know, there seem to be a lot of those in this where you go into this little, like, hallway and it's just got a bunch of, uh, like, uh, pots with hearts and stuff in them, which, I don't know, they're not, uh, I don't know, they're not that useful. If they happened in dungeons when you were, like, you know, taking damage and needing refills and stuff, it would be one thing. But out here, they're just kind of useless. That, and I don't need this many uh, rupees because there's nothing to spend them on. Like, I've already maxed out the uh, bombs and arrows. Uh, I guess I'll just head back up top. Now, I'm pretty sure there was a uh, spot in the mountain here where there was uh, a whole bunch of spikes or something, uh, and I've got to use that cape to get through it without dying, but uh, I don't remember where it is, so I'll uh, leave it for now. I 
I'm supposed to do this here? Or maybe in the dark world? No. Is it Quake? Oh, that kills those guys. That's nice. Might as well try. I don't think this will do anything. I like all the hearts they put there, like, yeah, you, you probably ran out of magic at some point. Okay, the Cane of Burna. I totally forgot that existed. I guess because you never need it. Yeah, this is a pretty long path. They really wanted to make sure you were like, you, you know, you couldn't just tank your way through it. sure how to get up to that uh, spot in the dark world. I feel like I, I missed something, but uh, anyways, I got the uh, quake, so or uh, ether. go and uh, try and get a shield.
Yeah, it would be nice if you could upgrade the magic mirror, uh, so that you could then warp, uh, freely between the two worlds anywhere you wanted. So I think this store here uh, sells uh, shields in the Dark World. Expecting one jar to like fully heal me, uh, and then I just have to toss the shield in here. I think it's the other fairy who uh, gets you to level four. Okay, just checking that there was nothing else. I think it's just the shield and the boomerang basically here. Okay. I should hopefully die a little bit less now. Okay, uh, hopefully I can actually do this dungeon. Alright, so I need the hookshot. That's good. The enemies aren't too strong. Right. Uh, I wanted to catch the fairy. That is the no. The, the mirror shield is in the, the Turtle Rock dungeon. So I don't think that would be it. Uh, I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, so I, I don't remember what that is then. Anyway, uh, now that I'm finally in the dungeon, uh, I guess I'll go on with. Uh, the rest of the Zelda games. Uh, 
So the next Zelda game that came out was uh, Triforce Heroes. Uh, I've never played it, and I I never had any interest in it. Again, it's a, a multiplayer only uh, thing. So uh, yeah, I don't I don't even remember. Uh, you know, I th I think there is you can play it somewhat single player. So maybe that would be fun sometime, but uh, I think it was mostly a multiplayer game. And with, you know, how bad Nintendo's online is, uh, I wasn't really interested in doing that. Plus, I seem to recall it had some, like, weird arbitrary uh, restriction, like you you couldn't just play with random people, or or you couldn't play with your friends, or you couldn't use voice chat or something. It was There was some weird... Uh, you know, usual Nintendo weirdness with the online. I was like, okay, it's this doesn't sound like I should bother with this. But, uh, I don't know, who knows, maybe someday I'll just play it, uh, like, by myself, multiplayer, and, like, a couple emulators linked together or something. So then the next one, of course, is Breath of the Wild. Uh, so this is, I don't know, it's maybe my second favorite Zelda game, maybe tied with the original for my favorite. They really do expect you to have the cape in this. Like, I guess you could do this dungeon without the cape, but uh, you'd be tanking a lot of damage. That room seemed strange. It was just empty. I was like, okay, there's... I guess it just had to connect the other rooms. Just a sec, I'm, uh, the recording's lagging for some reason, uh, or at least it is from my point of view. Uh, I'm just gonna break for a second and see what's going on. Okay, uh, I'm back again. Uh, I hope that, uh, fixed it. Let's just see. Uh, I haven't checked the previous recording. Hopefully it's not too bad. Uh, I just had a, uh, a backup uh, started, and so it was, I don't know, using the CPU and the drive and stuff uh, quite heavily. But uh, it's done now, so hopefully that's it. Uh, no uh, compass yet, I don't think. still kind of odd, I just gotta break again. Okay, uh, yeah, I just noticed it. I don't know if that'll show up on the recording, but it was looking kind of strange. So, uh, yeah, I guess in case, uh, I don't know. Uh, hopefully it's okay.
kill all of them. Yeah, I shouldn't have used them here or there. Oh well. Uh, Lots of keys, I just need to find a place to use them. So we're Breath of the Wild. Yeah, it's probably my favorite, favorite or second favorite Zelda. Uh, I know people talked about, oh, it's, you know, a huge departure from Zelda formula or whatever, but uh, I don't agree with that. I think it's actually like the first, you know, real Zelda, like real pure Zelda in a long time. Because that was always, like, you know, that was what Miyamoto had said that it was about, was about just, uh, you know, when he was a kid, just exploring and, uh, you know, just going around, just finding stuff. And, uh, uh, you know, the Zelda games, they started off like that. Like the original, you just run around and you explore and that's it. Uh, but... As they've gone on, they've they really kind of like lost their way with that, and they started to be just about like puzzles and the story and stuff. And I don't think the puzzles or the story in Zelda games have ever really been good. Uh, like the puzzles are, you know, not really that great. They're kind of. I don't know, often they're not even really what I would call puzzles, they're more either like busy work or trial and error. Like, you know, you go into a room and there's ten lit torches, or, or ten unlit torches and one lit one, and so yeah, you use your, uh, uh, whatever to just run around and light all the torches and that's it and it's not you know like this here like this isn't a puzzle you come in the room and you see and it's like okay that's that's what i have to do it's obvious I guess, uh, I guess that doesn't even do anything. Yeah, see, it's not really, I don't know. Yeah, the puzzles are usually like that, where they're just trial, you know, uh, busy work. Like, you know, here's a box in one half of the room, and on the other half of the room, there's like a box-shaped hole, so you just push the box across the room, or, you know, you go in a room and just kill, you know, you kill all the enemies, or...
you know, or whatever. It's never really, like, something really kind of, I don't know, difficult or, you know, nothing where you have to sit there and think for a long time. Uh, like, I think any real puzzle game, uh, you know, even the first few puzzles are going to be harder than, like, any, any puzzle in a Zelda game. Like, anything like, you know, uh, I don't know, Fire and Ice on the NES, or, uh, Choo Choo Rocket, or... Uh, you know, I played a little bit of The Witness recently. Uh, you know, anything, any puzzle in those is gonna, I think, be a better puzzle than basically any Zelda puzzle. And, like, the story was kind of the other area where they really got kind of obsessed with it, but... Uh, like, they obviously don't really care about the story. It's it's always just been, oh, you know, Ganon's gonna come back, so go get all the things before he comes back, and then, you know, save the princesses or whatever, and then Ganon comes back anyways, and, and then you fight him, and that's it. But, like, you know, as time's gone on, the Zelda series has gotten more and more kind of obsessed with that, where, you know, they start off with longer and longer cutscenes, and uh, you know, it takes more and more time before you get to actually play. Like, the first Zelda was just, you know, you start it, and you're right there on the world map immediately. And then, you know, the second Zelda, I think, was pretty much the same. I don't remember if it had, like, a little bit of talking or whatever. Uh, you know, then this, it had... Uh, I think you're supposed to use the hook shot there to get across before it starts to fall, but... Uh, but whatever. You know, then this has, you know, five or ten minutes or so of, uh, you know, dialogue and stuff. And you're also, uh, really kind of limited at the start. Like, in the first two Zelda games, once you start, you're just, you're on your own. You just go where you want and, you know, go play. But, uh, in this, you've got to do that opening, uh, princess saving, uh, thing. And then... You know, Ocarina of Time gets a bit worse, where, you know, it's got you know, several minutes of uh, cutscene and stuff at the beginning that, where you can't really do anything, and you've got to sit there and go through it, and, uh, you know, up until you get out of Kakariko, or uh, Kohiri Village, it's kind of limited. You know, it's really kind of on rails, and then, uh, I don't know, uh, Twilight Princess, I think, gets, you know, quite a bit worse, where you've got that opening, uh, messing around in the farm section for, that takes forever, and then, uh, Skyward Sword was, oh wow, yeah, I wasn't paying attention how much damage they were doing. I think they're taking off like three hearts or something. But yeah, then Skyward Sword was just awful. Like the game, it takes like five hours to even start like playing and then you're interrupted every five minutes by another uh, cutscene or story thing. But even then, like, we you know, with all the story stuff that's going on in it, it's still, like, not good. It's still just, oh, you know, the, the princess has been kidnapped or whatever, go get her. So, like, there's not really any point to it. It's like, they might as well have just took all that out. I 
right, I've got the dungeon item anyway, so... Like, I did before come along that one spot where there was the big key, but uh, I didn't want to go through it because I didn't know, okay, I haven't got the dungeon item yet, I really shouldn't be fighting the boss yet. Uh, but now that I've got it, I guess, uh, you know, I don't have the the map or the compass yet. Okay, so I, w I would have gotten stuck here anyways, because there's no, uh, you need to use the cane to push down that block. Yeah, so like all that story and stuff, I don't think was ever really worth it. And the puzzles too in the Zelda games weren't really, uh, you know, all that great. So I didn't mind that, you know, Breath of the Wild took them out and went back to the exploration, which I think is the only thing that the games have ever actually done well. And that's kind of, I think, like the, uh, you know, like Zelda is exploration. Like to me, a Zelda game where you're just on rails going, you know, one cutscene to another, you know, that's like a, you know, a Mario game where you can't jump or a Pokemon game where, you know, you don't actually catch Pokemon. Like, you know, like Pokemon Snap's great and everything, but it's not a mainline Pokemon game because you're, you're not catching Pokemon. Uh, same with, you know, like, Mario Tennis isn't, like, a Mario game. It's, like, a, a game that has Mario in it. So, yeah, I thought Zelda, you know, Breath of the Wild, it was like, no, this isn't, like, some weird new thing. This is Zelda actually being Zelda, like, 100% pure Zelda for once. Although they did still have uh, cutscenes and stuff and talking and all that in Zelda, but uh, or in Breath of the Wild, but uh, I I think it would have been better without it because uh, you know again none of it was really that great. It was just you know more just talking and stuff. Uh, I don't you know I think cutscenes should really be used as little as possible they should be seen they should be treated as like text crawls in a movie like yeah if it's some great big event that you cannot possibly show you know do in gameplay then okay do it in a cutscene or whatever but but it should be like the absolute minimum like you know if you went into a movie and you know like they'll do a, a text crawl at the beginning to kind of explain all the backstory which you know, whatever, I don't think that's the best way to do it, but it's not that bad, but if a movie had, like, a cutscene every, or a, a big, you know, cut to black text crawl, you know, every five minutes or something, you'd be like, okay, well, like, just write a book, like, you're obviously not interested in making a movie. So I think games are the same, it should be, unless you absolutely cannot possibly do it in gameplay, and you can't like change the story to make it something that can be done in gameplay then yeah it, it really should be done in just with gameplay like uh you know in breath of the wild it uh you know you start the game and you have to sit through a bunch of you know a little bit of talking it's a couple it's not too bad it's like a couple minutes or whatever but it really would be better if you could just you just start and you know you can fill in the story as you go and then, you know, when you first get out of the uh, the Shrine of Awakening and you uh, go up onto the, uh, you know, that little hill and then it takes control away from you and, uh, you know, shows the, uh, the landscape and the camera pans around and Link runs to the edge of the cliff and all that. It's like, okay, you know, when that happened, I'm just watching, okay, like, this is a cutscene, like, I don't care, like, it's, 
you know, it's lost all the impressiveness of it because it's, you know, it's like a laugh track in a com in a comedy show or something. It's like, okay, you know, you're telling me I should laugh, and then, you know, in the opening of that, it was like, okay, you know, you're saying, oh, look, this is so impressive, you know, be in awe of it. But it would have been so much more impactful if I could have just ran to the edge of the cliff and looked. You know, I would have probably stopped and like, wow, this is awesome. But instead, I was like, okay, this is annoying. You know, stop with the cutscene and let me play. I hope I don't need uh, magic on this guy. Yo, and that's kind of that's what I've always thought about like the vast majority of cutscenes. Like uh, Dark Souls is another game that I just love, and uh, but. does a lot of damage. At least I got four fairies. Uh, but, you know, and it doesn't re it's not like really story heavy and it's got very few cutscenes and they're all, they're not bad as far as cutscenes go, but uh, it would still be much better if they weren't there. Actually, I'm just gonna concentrate for a bit. Uh, I think he's gonna kill me at this rate because I'm not 100% sure how you dodge his uh, lightning. Actually... I'm not sure if I was supposed to use the cape there to, uh... I think I've got two fairies left. Oh, well, one now, I guess. I guess... Yeah, so like the, the cutscenes in Dark Souls, they weren't that bad, you know, they were kind of, they were short and interesting and stuff. Uh, but I thought, you know, they all could have been done just in gameplay. Like, you know, when you get up to Anne Orlando, uh, the, the little gargoyle things carry you up and they drop you and then the camera pans and there's the, like, oh, look at this, it's, you know, bright and amazing. But... You know, because it was in a cutscene, it's like, okay, yeah, you're, you're telling me that, but, uh, you know, it would have been so much cooler if you could have, you know, climbed up some stairs and, you know, gone out a, you know, through an arc or something, and then, you know, it's all dark, and then you're like, it's like, you know, you just come out there, and there's Anne Orlando in, like, the sunset. It would have been so much more impactful than just telling you, like, look at this, be amazed. She said something about Turtle Rock. Uh, maybe I just need to beat a certain number of dungeons before I can get into Turtle Rock. Anyway. I guess I'll go do the uh, Kakariko village nearby place. I would go fill up my uh, 
fairy bottles, but uh, I don't offhand remember where to actually get fairies. Yeah, and then there was like, uh, you know, all of the boss uh, entrance cutscenes in Dark Souls I thought also would have been much cooler and uh, stuff if they were just you know, actual gameplay instead of cutscenes like the the gaping dragon. I thought was one that really stood out. Was that uh, you know you, you see it and you know you go into the place and you approach the water and then it switches to a cutscene of like the the dragon's head you know swimming towards you and then he pops out and rears back and he's like you know his head made it look like it was just some little. You know, tiny monster, but he's actually like this huge, terrifying thing. Uh, I should search this. No. Uh, but, like, you know, it would have been so much cooler if you had have just approached the water and there was like some little you know, tiny enemy, and it's, you know, the dragon's head, and you just walk up, and you're like, oh, you know, this is no problem, you smack it, and then he just pops out of the water, and it's like, and, you know, that would have been so much cooler than just being like, oh, you know, here's a cutscene. So I did, uh, I skipped basically like all the, the cutscenes in Zelda, as soon as somebody started talking I just uh, skipped it, which fortunately it let you do. You know, although, you know, I do wish, I think it should be like standard in games, they should just have an option in the menu you go to and just turn off the story and it's like, you know, no more cutscenes happen. Uh, you know, if you talk to an NPC, instead of getting, you know, 20 lines of uh, fluff, you just get, like, you know, go to the place north of here, or whatever. Whatever actual, like, relevant information they were giving you. There was something to do with these woodcutters here. Oh, Could be fairies a bit. Yeah, and I never, I don't think I even saw any of the memories. Like, I think there is, you can apparently use the camera or whatever in uh, certain locations to uh, see the, I don't know, cutscenes about Zelda or whatever. Uh, but I, I just totally skipped them. And yeah, my, I don't know, my same feeling is with, uh, like, voice acting. I don't think games need voice acting at all. Uh, I know some people are like, oh, it's, you know, it's just a flat-out improvement. Every game should have it. And they're like, oh, yeah, you know, it's, you know, they're like, oh, you know, it's 2018 now or whatever. Why, you know, why should Zelda not have voice acting? But uh, I don't think it really added anything to it. And it's, uh, I don't know, it was just extra cost, I think. I think they should have, uh, you know, cut the voice acting and then used the resources to, you know, hire more programmers or whatever to make more enemies or something. Like, I think that would have been a much better use of it than going and voice acting it in, like, ten different languages or whatever they did. Thank you. 
Nope. Yeah, I think that's the guy who stole my shield before. Okay, I think there's some funny business with the uh, mirror here. You've got to go back and forth or something. Uh, maybe not. Oh, it's this problem again. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, I think I need to go into the village and then... And then I can go uh, around and back up into, I think, that part on the left. Or on the right now. Uh, I think it'll be blocked off by uh, blocks or something. You know, black uh, rocks. So I'm in the dungeon now. Okay, uh, I need to enter somewhere else first, I guess. I think I gotta fall down one of these holes. Thank <laughs> you. 
It would be nice if Link had a magic to heal himself. This will stop the beeping anyways. Yeah, I'm not sure how I'm supposed to get up there. I was worried I was going to glitch out of the wall there and then uh, not be able to get back to the dark world. Okay, how was it I did this? It's the fire rod. I think if it was a fire rod, that would do it.
I don't think this is it. Uh, it must be something inside the dungeon. You, uh... Yeah. It's something inside the dungeon, I think. the hook shot doesn't uh, electrocute you. Maybe it's uh, insulated or something. Uh, big chest was here, so if I can get back to it, uh, I'll be able to get it. Uh, yeah, so I guess, uh, you know, back to Breath of the Wild, uh, I really like that you could just go, like, anywhere right from the start, and also that you could, like, even go and fight the last boss from the start. That's something, like, I've always thought for a long time. It would be really cool if there was a game where it was, like, you know, the, there's the evil bad guy, and you have to go, you know, collect whatever so you can get stronger to fight him. But that was actually just like, you know, a game mechanic, like, you know, the collecting the magic items made you stronger, and if once you, you know, that allowed you to be strong enough to fight him, instead of a lot of times, like, you know, it's arbitrary story stuff where it's like, oh, you, you know, you need them so you can fight them, but really you can't even fight him until you get them, like, it's all just... You know, it's fixed in the story that, like, you can't even get to his place and fight him without them. And, you know, even if you're, like, max level or whatever, if you don't have them, then you can't beat him. So I like that in Zelda. That, uh, you know, I've always thought that's something that a game should have, where, uh, you know, you can, if you want to, just go and fight the last boss right from the start. And, you know, everything you're doing really, really is just to make you stronger so that you can beat him.
you know, and there wasn't any, like, you know, stuff locked behind arbitrary things like that. Like, you know, if you want to just head out to the desert, you could. And, uh, you know, if you want to head out to, I don't know, the coast or the mountain or whatever, you could. You could just do whatever you wanted, which was really nice. Uh, I do find on re repeat playthroughs the opening tutorial area is a bit of a pain. I do wish you started off with, like, the glider and stuff. The glider and the runes, and then, uh, you know, doing the tutorial island was kind of optional. Yeah, I do, uh, I don't know, despite all that, I do think there are, I don't know, quite a few kind of not great points with the game, though. Uh, I don't know if it's just they're kind of rusty with, uh, you know, making this kind of game. Or something, because, uh, yeah, it... I don't know, for as good of it as it was, it had like a lot of points that I didn't really like, but I don't know, hopefully when 2 comes out, they'll improve all those, although I'm, I don't, I'm not, uh, not really that hopeful, uh, uh, Nintendo seems to just kind of do whatever, and then, uh, I don't know. I'm kind of guessing 2 is going to go back to being like, you know, just a linear story heavy, you know, typical Zelda game. Uh, but I hope it's not, anyways. Alright, so I guess I have to use the fire rod on his head. Okay, yeah, see, I don't, I don't like that, the, really the, the cane, or bombos, or the lantern should be, uh, fine to do that as well. Like, they all, they all make fire, they all should, uh, have the same effect. Okay, there's something there. Thought that wouldn't hit me there. Yeah, like, uh, so one thing I didn't like was the lack of enemies. Uh, I thought there was just way too few. Like, even the first Zelda game has more enemies than uh, Breath of the Wild did. You know, really, it had Moblins, uh, Stalfos, uh, the mini-boss type enemies. And that was basically it. Like, I know there were, there were bats and, uh, uh, slimes and stuff, but they were more just, uh, environmental hazards, basically. Like, you just, you know, you, they got in the way, sort of, and you just killed them instantly, and they weren't really that big of a threat. So I've just got to go all the way back, I guess. 
Oh, and he's blocking and spawning and have to tank some hits to get through. Probably actually not be uh, destroying blocks if I can help it. Okay, good. Uh, I was worried he was going to take me back to the uh, the other entrance of the dungeon, and I was going to have to go all the way through uh, to get back here. Okay. Okay, I thought it was going to be some clever thing where you have to leave certain blocks in order to hook shot back. Uh, I guess not. Okay, that's actually a much easier way of killing them. See, I had thought that... Uh, that would just turn them into a skeleton. I died there. Okay, that was close. Yeah, there was also, I don't know, the problems with the durability. Uh, I thought it was kind of like it had, they had to put the durability in. Like, I think if you just took the durability out, it would be a worse game, but I think a better way to do it would have been to have, uh, it more, you know, make the weapons different, even if you had to have less of them, but make it so that they're all a little bit different, uh, but also, like, equal, and make it so you could level them up uh, at the fairy, uh, similar to armor. Uh, you know, like, have them, like, in Dark Souls, where, you know, every single sword plays a little bit differently. They've got slightly different attack animations and stuff, and different range and stuff like that. Uh... You know, whereas in Breath of the Wild, there's basically, like, there's, like, four different weapons, basically. There's sword, 
two-handed sword, spear, and boomerang or whatever. And that's it, and all of them play the same. Uh, you know, if they had all the weapons be a little bit different, and, uh, you know, you could, uh, you know, level them up, but they were all, you know, equally as good. Like, there's, in Dark Souls, there's no, not really many weapons that are you know, flat out better than every other weapon, or many weapons that are just worse than every other weapon. Uh... I'm not sure where to go now. Two crystals left. Um... So I need more fairies. Uh, I'm just gonna break the recording here because it's getting a bit long and I don't want to get to a uh, you know too big of a file uh, and also I want to just look up where I can get fairies and then I will go do the uh, ice dungeon I guess all right uh, back in a little bit <laughs> 